Thank you so much for staying with CNN News 18. I'm Griha Atul Siddiqui and we are beginning the top of 3 p.m. with some breaking news that is coming in. Now, amid the mega crackdown on the popular front of India, CNN News 18 has managed to access the NIA dossier against the top leadership of the popular front of India, the men who orchestrated a reign of terror. All these three accused, all of them had normal day jobs and secretly they were conspiring against the country in collusion with terror organizations. My colleague Arunama joins me on the broadcast. Arunama, what does this dossier really say? So if you see the dossier, it actually lists uh, by name uh, each one of the office bearers and it has, uh, you know, about nine, ten of them. Each one of them, their credentials, their past, the cases that are against them, they've all been listed together. This is important because this gives you an insight as to why this action was taken. Let me start with OMS Salam, the chairperson of Popular Front of India. As per this document, he's an employee of the Kerala State Electricity Board. Until 2020, he was in service when he was finally suspended by the Human Resource Department for uh, taking up the chairmanship of Popular Front of India. There are cases registered against him uh, at the Malapuram police station under various various sections of uh, IPC and uh, he has uh, faced departmental inquiry as well. Uh, the next person who, who's interesting is a founder member of PFI who goes by the name of P. Koya. He is a National Executive Council member. Um, often uh, you've, you've heard him uh, asking media channels uh, as to what evidence do they have when they allege uh, PFI's involvement in any crime. So he's like the face of PFI, so to say. He was an active CME worker uh, till 1978-79 uh, and then he went to Qatar after taking leave from service. It is alleged that he is an active worker of Simi uh, and had pro-Iranian leanings as well. Played a key role in the formation of National Development Front. This was precursor uh, to Popular Front of India. So mm -hmm. he's one of those committed, radicalized individuals who provided leadership to PFI. Uh, there are various positions that he has held and has various cases against him as well. Anish Ahmed is the third name uh, that is being highlighted from this dossier, the National General Secretary of PFI. He had studied in Bangalore and... Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, his, his job was to extend PFI's presence in the cyberspace. That's what uh, this, this uh, uh, dossier says. He has been regular in taking motivational classes and has presented some papers as well on PFI's program. Uh, he's active on social media and on national news channels as well. So Anis Ahmed uh, is also somebody who you would have seen appear and give, uh, you know, uh, phono interviews and uh, present PFI's point of view. He worked at the global technical, uh, he worked as a global technical manager at a, at a top, uh, you know, company, tech company. I'm not taking the name here, but it's a top tech company in Bengaluru. Uh, he was employed there, so well-educated, um, has the right educational credentials and the primary associates of uh, former chairperson of PFI E. Abu Bakr, uh, former president of SDPI, A. Saeed, and uh, the former national chairper chairperson, Abdul Rahman. So again, somebody who is uh, who's given the job of getting PFI popular support, travels in and out of India, is what the dossier says, uh, uh, and core committee member. Uh, so these are some of the top names. Uh, other than that, there are others as well. E. M. Abdul Rahman, I just told you how uh, E. M. Abdul Rahman, from a middle class family uh, in Ernakulam, has risen through the ranks. Uh, was a librarian at the Cochin University, uh, one of those committed members of PFI. So these are individual uh, leaders of the Popular Front of India at the national level against whom uh, there is enough evidence that the agencies have found and therefore decided to prosecute them. Uh, you know, Arunama, you mentioned uh, Mr. P. Koya, who is a face of PFI. Of course, there is association with CIMI because he has past liaisons with it. So we were essentially also talking about and have been talking about uh, uh, the circumstances that led to the ban on a PFI and how possibly there could be another output that could come into play um, in the next five years. We do not know of that. Uh, CIMI really happened in the same way. That association really is uh, being underlined with these arrests that uh, you just named. Yes, absolutely. When you when you ban an organization, like CIMI is a proscribed organization, just by uh, you know establishing that you were a member of CIMI or you continue to maintain your as association with that organization, even when it was proscribed, makes you uh, you know liable 
for prosecution mm. under law. Mm. And that is exactly what is happening to PFI now. Now that it has banned, if, if anybody's association with that organization can be established, you are automatically liable to be prosecuted. So in this case of Mr. Koya, uh, it is not only being alleged that he was an active member of the Student Islamic Movement of India or the CIMI, but uh, he was one of the founder members of the Popular Front of India. So all the conspiracies starting from the arm chopping incident uh, to killings uh, of, of Rudresh uh, to, to others who have been mentioned. Um, the allegation is that he was aware of the conspiracy as part of the national leadership of the Popular Front of India. He perhaps played an active role in recruiting and giving instructions to the people who actually carried out these killings on ground. All right. Uh, also, you know, the fact that this dossier has been accessed by us, of course, it is further uh, giving us incriminating or, uh, you know, uh, proof uh, that further goes ahead and uh, talks about how uh, the Popular Front of India and the top leaders were really operating uh, in the country. And of course, we have been talking about the fundings that they uh, actually received. Um, Arunima, I'm, I'm afraid I'll have to just interrupt uh, with uh, this particular story. We are going across to the cabinet briefing that's currently underway. We'll take a